All right, so the parts have started to come in for this bike. What we got up first is a new seat. This is actually after my other Free Spirit. Bought a better seat for that one. Uh, that was free. We have uh, an original uh, two horsepower high torque cylinder as well as head, a new spark plug. I picked up a pack of these Gub Cube. Um, yeah, Gub Cube terminals. Um, you just cut them down to the right size that you need and you're good to go there like so. Um, as well have a new throttle tube and a new um, choke and brake lever mount. So let's get started and get this seat put on. After getting this uh, original seat removed, you can see why I have chosen to just replace versus repair. It is falling apart, literally. So that needs some more work. And I replaced the other seat. So this one was sitting there and it's pretty much free. There's it. it's a little bit of a hole here, but much better than that. So let's get this put on. So there's these spacers that are on these bolts that go underneath the free spirit seat. They were actually seized on there and it took a bit of uh, persuasion with a rubber mallet to get them off. But look how much rust and crusties fell off just trying to get these spacers removed from here. That's ridiculous. Let's get these wire wheels and cleaned up. All right, these are looking much better. Now let's throw them on the bike. Everything's bolted in and ready to go. So let's do the next thing. I'm gonna start working on these uh, grips up here. I need to replace this clutch and brake lever mount. It's just kind of broken. And I have a new throttle tube for this side. So let's get those installed. So I'm letting this brake line adjuster kind of soak in some PB blaster before I try moving it. It was pretty crusty, but once I get that off, we can get this new lever put on. Okay, here. This one does not want to move. Uh, gotta break out the pliers. Let's see if we can get this front nut to move. There it goes. I ended up getting that lever taken off of this broken uh, mount and installing it on here. Everything seems to be lining up nice and well. Got all the cables routed as well as the brake light um, switch. And luckily the throttle tube that I got was actually a matching um, set of these Magura grips. And uh, this one's a little bit more sun faded because it's been outside for a, a few decades. Um, but once we get this installed, everything should be good. Now that we have both of these installed and mocked up for now, uh, still have to get some of the cabling to be trimmed up. Uh, we need to get the cylinder studs, cylinder and head uh, installed, as well as this old seized piston off of the crankshaft. So let's get that done. After getting some more two-stroke oil in there, I'm pretty excited for a rebuild. Everything seems to be moving pretty smoothly. There's no resistance whatsoever. There's still some surface rust and uh, stuff on the crankshaft, but that shouldn't be a problem for now. Everything is buttery smooth. So everything's looking good. And with a hammer and a metal punch, I was able to get this piston uh, free from the crankshaft. Um, everything is super smooth in here. We just gotta get the cylinder studs as well as that high torque cylinder on here and at least get a stock setup going. I'm gonna be using these ESO cylinder studs and some stainless steel M6 uh, nuts. Um, I heard these Polini ones actually strip out pretty easily. I got these for free in one of the bikes I picked up. There was just a bunch of extra parts. 
um, but I just don't feel like using these ones. They had some kind of iffy reviews. So just a simple set of ESO cylinder studs. Let's get those put on. Now that we have those ESO cylinder studs installed, I want to unbox this original two horsepower high torque cylinder and head and get those slapped on really quick. After unboxing both the head and the cylinder, uh, the head's gonna need a little bit more work than I thought, but it's nothing that a simple steel wool uh, session can't fix. And then this just needs to be cleaned off, just taking the old burnt oil off of here and getting it ready to go. As well as it looks like we are missing the exhaust uh, studs, so I'll get those replaced as well. I went ahead and got this head cleaned up, so that is ready to go. Piston, I took off the rings and took off all the extra carbon in there, so that is a clean original piston with the original rings, and the cylinder is looking great. So that is ready to go, so this just needs to be oiled up and slapped onto the E50. Got the cylinder, piston, and head put on, unseized the crankshaft, and uh, oiled everything up. Dude, this thing is fucking ready to go. For the spark plug, I'm going to be using an original NGK B6HS gapped to 0.016 inches or 0.4 millimeters. And we're going to be using a 13 16 spark plug socket. Once that's installed, I just need to get the wire terminal put on, as well as the intake carb and exhaust, and then we should be able to fire it right up. I've gone ahead and installed that NGK spark plug. Um, I'm using the original uh, spark plug boot, and because of that, you need to take off this little nipple. Um, this installs and just goes on easily. For the wiring harness, I got that all situated with this new GovCube terminal. Once that's tucked away, we can put a new carb or get that intake and carb installed. Uh, I will be using this 14 millimeter original Bing carb. This just needs a rebuild kit, but unfortunately I do need a aftermarket intake. Uh, this one does have a leak up top, so this isn't too good. With the new top end and seat installed, this thing is actually shaping up pretty nicely. Again, we're still waiting on that intake and exhaust, but once those arrive, we'll see what else we need and uh, get this started for the first time. I cannot wait to see how it's gonna sound.